if you're going to say to somebody, oh, I talk to dead people, that's a claim that requires evidence or, you know, I mean, proof. Well, this should be a very interesting interview. Matt Cullen, C-U-L-L-E-N, did with Thomas John. It was uploaded to Matt Cullen's YouTube channel, which is simply called Matt Cullen, on uh, six days ago. So what would that have been? Sunday... December 17th, because I'm recording this on the 23rd of December, right? Almost it's Christmas Eve's Christmas Eve. <laughs> so this was brought to my attention. I can't remember how I learned about it, but I have many people watching Thomas Dolan and keeping an eye on him and Google alerts and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of many ways I could have entered encountered this video. What's really fascinating about it is how cowardly Matt Cullen and Thomas John are because they talk about me, but they will not mention my name. And I'm going to show you. I, I've tried reaching out to Matt Cullen. I've left three comments with links and um, my email and everything on the YouTube channel. They're not appearing. I have screenshots to show that I posted these and they're not there now. It's like, they're gone, which makes it sound like he's trying to hide it. Now, why wouldn't he say my name? What's the problem? What are you afraid of? Well, I think I know what he's afraid of. And I think I know exactly why Thomas John does not want my name mentioned. Um, there was a time <laughs> a few years ago, Thomas John put up on his Facebook page, um, you know, oh, this woman is picking on me and she says all these evil things and she's just this awful cat woman and she's, the, 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 you know, on and on. She's an atheist and she's this and she's that. And he got an outpouring of love. Oh my gosh, immediate, immediate outpouring of love. And there was probably a thousand comments from women who were saying how much, oh, how evil she is, how awful she is. Oh, what a horrible person she is. Now he didn't mention my name, but what happened was people, his followers, were curious who this woman was. So they started Googling, you know, Thomas John and and scam or Thomas John and 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 skeptic and so on. And they started finding my articles and they started posting, this must be the woman. This is the woman. And they're putting links to the articles I've written about him. And then I started getting private messages from people who said, I've just been following this guy. I had no idea or I've had readings for, I mean, it was a, it backfired on him. Of course, he got a lot of love and attention, but you know, <laughs> it's not a really smart thing. Yeah. Okay. Emotionally, you're getting the the love, but I, it was kind of like a moment in time where people in his community started knowing who I was and looking into the articles I've written and so on. My all the stats and all the platforms I had articles on started rising at that time because, and he didn't even have to mention me. So here it is. Here's this other video. He's uh, doing a reading with this Matt Cullen who, oh, calls himself. I wrote this down. Um, a freelance documentarian and journalist. Well, I have news for you, Matt. And it's really sad because I think this is a person I probably would have actually liked. You know, it seems like we have a lot in common. It seems like somebody I would really have had um, a good working relationship with. But um, Matt, journalists contact people, at, at least attempt to, and you didn't. And when you were made aware of who I am and what's going on, you deleted my comments. So that's not cool. That's not right. So we're going to go through this video. I'll put a link to it if you want to see the whole thing, because I'm just going to go through parts of it. And uh, let's let's see what the truth is behind this, because, you know, say my name. It's it's not right to leave my name out of this thing. If you want if you want people to take you seriously as a journalist, you kind of have to do that. Right. It's not all about telling fairy tale stories so some of the things i want to put out are that um 
according to his YouTube channel, let me pull this up so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Well, I'll, I'll put this quote up here. Okay. And this is, you can find this on his YouTube channel. Um, if you're a company or brand interested in a commissioned video or a brand sponsorship on one of my episodes, email me. Airline companies, hotels, car rental services, an external handheld microphone company, a camera equipment company, luggage company, backpack company, and city tourism companies are all ideas I can see working seamlessly into the series. So if you're interested in a commissioned video, in other words, you pay or be paid, you know, somebody is paying you for the com commission, he's going to show your brand. He's going to show and he's going to talk about you then um, be in contact. So Thomas John is a brand. He's, he's, that's the same kind of thing. So just throwing that out there. So if you're willing to take money for doing a story like this, so that somebody can, you know, manipulate your community, your followers. What does that say about you? Trust me, there's there's a lot of harm in this. It's almost all harm. And ignoring the facts only makes you look bad, Matt. So let's look more at this video, this interview. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is Thomas John has there's two communities out there on Facebook. You can look them up. It says they they say uh, Thomas John, and then they have the word scam in their um, Facebook pages. Now, these are something I did not create. I didn't know any of these people. Whenever these two Facebook independently were created as a way of getting money back from Thomas John and or learning about what is going on, you know, how he's how he's the things he does. These are made up of people who were all Thomas John either supporters or Thomas John um, had had uh, purchased a reading from him. Now, I'm in there now, but I didn't know of him before. And some of the things that these women, they're all almost all women, are very desperate to do is to get their money back. And... I'm not going to go into long detail because I have other videos on this and I have articles on this and you could go to those Facebook pages. You can find them just as easily and learn all about what's going on in there. There's hundreds and hundreds of women in there. And multiple times women have said, what is his real address? How can I find him? Not because they want to go there, but because they want to send uh, letters to him directly or they want to contact, and I've heard, I've heard one woman told, told everybody that she contacted the police on him because he would not give her money back. And the police went to the location, and the location she, she, she sent him to was in um, Minnesota, I think, Michigan. Far away from where I live right now. And it's his, it's his sister's house, apparently, or at least his sister, I think, is living in that house. But that's where he's getting his mail. And... Um, you know, that's common knowledge. Everybody knows uh, this kind of information because when he gives a, when he does on a rare occasion, give a refund, then the address is on the envelope and lots of people know this, but where does he actually live right now? So doxing is a problem. So we shouldn't be doxing people because that's dangerous. We don't want anybody harmed. Um, Thomas John is, um, uh, does drag, which is an art form. Beautiful. Um, but um, there is a certain segment of the population who does not, who thinks that's bad and horrible. And those people are terribly, horribly wrong. And um, and so I would never want to have anybody dox anybody um, who does that, especially if they've already got a clientele that is very pissed off at him. So when Matt, at the beginning of his show, shows where Thomas John lives, 
um, enough that somebody could go to Google Earth and figure it out shows the front of his house. I mean, the house number is not on there or anything, but it's figure outable if somebody really wanted to. I think that's dangerous. So Matt, I know you think you're Tyler Henry here and Tyler Henry, you know, going to somebody's house to get a reading, uh, but um, that's dangerous. And I'm just putting that out there that you probably not a great idea. And, you know, maybe he thinks he's protected. I don't know. I don't think it's safe. I don't know his address. I'm not interested in knowing Thomas John's address, but you clearly put a lot of information on it. It's West Hollywood. You've got it all over the screen and um, a bit of the drive and the location of the houses nearby and what the front of his house looks like. And West Hollywood is a small community, so it really wouldn't be hard to find him. And so... You can see him driving around in this neighborhood, getting out, where to park... Where his house is located. I mean, oh, how are you? good. How are you? Your place is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I didn't know what to expect. <gasps> oh my gosh. So, yeah. I am blown away. I don't think I've ever been in a house this nice in LA. Oh, wow. How long have you lived here for? Um, for about a year, yeah, because I, I actually lived out here for a while and then I moved back to New York for a year and then I came back. It's a nice neighborhood, too. It, yeah, I love it's it. Yeah, it's peaceful. Yeah, it's kind of like, I like it because it's kind of private, yeah. Yeah, and still very central, though. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, you know, let me hold you. Hey, so all those people out there who've been trying to get refunds from Thomas John for such a long time, now you know partly where your money's going, right? That ain't cheap. That house ain't cheap. I've watched a lot of your clips on YouTube mm -hmm. and the stuff you do is so amazing. And also I'm just fascinated with mediums and uh -huh. the psychic ability. I really like what you do. So I was kind of thought it would be a good, good fit. There are only so many mediums that are so known like you and I guess Tyler Henry uh -huh. and the Long Island medium. Right. Do you know them? I don't know Teresa. Tyler and I have had a couple of conversations before. How does like one crossover to become Maybe he's had some conversations with Tyler Henry. Oh boy. So I've been following Tyler Henry since he started 2016, January. I think it was January 2016 when Hollywood Medium came out. And I have my opinions about Tyler Henry. And I have been heard, I have heard, and I've heard Thomas John writing this on his own social media and saying this in some of his Facebook lives about how some of the other mediums, and I believe he's including John Edward, Tyler Henry, Sharma Gallus, um, in that they diss him. And, um, you know, he gets no respect from them. And then it doesn't shock me at all, because if you've got some, a bad apple within your, your nice pile of apples, and you are, have been shown to be rotten and um, are tainting the, the whole pool of apples, then you might want to get them out. So, because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, Tyler and I, you can read all about Tyler. I've written about him a zillion times and you can find videos on him of what I think of Tyler Henry, but right now we're talking about Thomas John, but it's very interesting that uh, Teresa Caputo um, he doesn't, hasn't talked to her. That's interesting. Um, he's not really a celebrity. Yes, I know he's had two TV shows. They're both, uh, one on CBS All Access, and I believe one was on Lifetime. They both were canceled after, after a short season. He has had a resurgence in his career with TikTok and showing video clips on TikTok and different places. So that was a boon to him. But, um, no, he is not a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, there's a Wikipedia page and there's one for Matt Frazier and there's one for Suzanne Northup, but that is not a celebrity. I mean, no, go on a street and ask an average person if they've heard of Tyler Henry or they've heard of um, Thomas John and you'll see they might have heard of Tyler Henry, but they definitely have not heard of Thomas John. So um this guy's fanning on uh, Thomas John, but there's no celebrity in there. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. 
like a celebrity medium like you are, like Tyler Henry is? I started doing being a professional medium when I was about 23 years old. And I was living in New York at the time. I mean, I always say if I lived in Idaho, I would probably have, you know, farmers as my, you know, it's just like, that's who lives in New York. It's everybody's like in fashion, magazines, entertainment, musicians. So I would get a lot of that people. I wasn't like actively trying to read, you know, famous people, but I. So at the age of 23, he starts doing medium shop. Well, let's see what was actually going on in his life during that time. I have some links. Let's check this out. So as I said, and it's no secret that Thomas John does and has done drag. Um, he performs under Lady, Lady Vera Parker. And um, in when he was 25, okay, he said he started doing readings at 23. When he's 25, he was arrested for and jailed on two felony counts, one of theft and one of theft by deception is confirmed by the chicagopride.com by the circuit court's information office. Uh, he was booked July 2nd. He's being held at the Cook County Jail. Um, and he appeared on the drag scene in 2007. And he appeared as a drag queen and so on and so on and so on. So as although the precise details and facts of the case are not known, theft by deception is someone who commits an offense of online theft by deception when he or she uses the internet to purchase or attempt to purchase property from a seller with a mode of payment that he or she knows is fictitious, stolen, or lack of consent to the valid account holder. Uh, probation penalties range from probation to 30 years in prison. Rumors have been flying. Um, and this person who's also a drag queen perform entertainer says that they're hysterical about this. And I'm happy to see that Lady Vera Parker got what she deserved. So multiple posts have been appeared on the internet and websites um, saying what it was actually about. And other internet posts say that it was alleged scam for money have drawn the interest of the Chicago Police Department with the posting asking for um, anybody with information to call that phone number. I have called that phone number. And yes, it is a legitimate phone number for the Chicago Police. And then let's look at this link. So this was, it's hard to believe that's Thomas John, huh? Um, he ran a Craigslist scam. He had hired a PR firm to fix his image because he wanted to be able to do mediumship. This is in 2016. And that what he did is he hired them. Uh, this is according to the Daily Mail. A celebrity psychic with a shady history of fraud is reliving his past life as a scam artist, is what they say in this article. Um, he's being sued by a California-based public relations firm that says he hasn't paid his bill for an image makeover. They're calling him a crooked clairvoyant. I turned to upstart PR firm ZT PR to clean up his image after the Daily News uncovered his sword past as a Craigslist scammer last year. And he failed to pay for the services, which is just over $3,000, according to court documents. Uh, the PR company completed all the services of helping him to build and exaggerate in the press his public profile as a believable psychic medium, according to court papers and talks about his real name he was busted in 2009 for posting bogus apartment ads on craigslist and stealing security deposits from unsuspecting renters uh, it says he's worked out a settlement that's what he says uh, but the company said a deal was still being hammered out and thomas john says that it's being settled out of court i've worked with a number of publicists with great success and respect the profession tremendously Okay, that's what he says. Uh, I don't know. So I've heard Thomas John talk about his past before on different lives and um, Facebook lives and so on. And he says it's like a few hundred dollars he took. He really downplays it. I mean, like a lot downplays it. But if you look on the internet, and I'm not going to show you right now, you can find him in other places. You can find that there are many websites. Look under Thomas John Flanagan Jr., Make sure you look for the junior part uh, where it shows what he actually was doing and all the different schemes he had um, using fake names and um, and so on. I, I've had many people compare him to George Santos. It's quite 
interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know the situation enough to be able to speculate on it. I'm just saying this is what I've been told multiple times that um, there were some memes going around saying that has anybody seen George Santos and Thomas John in the room, same room together? Anyway, I digress. Let's go back to finding out what's going on over here. The pressure to you, though, I mean, I'm sure, especially as you gain popularity and, you know, fame, that people are reaching out to you and begging for a reading if they can't afford it. Or there's like a lot of stress, I'm sure, that comes with your star meter rising as a medium. It comes from different angles. One would be there's the, the sort of like the pressure of always proving yourself, you know? There's people that come out of a, a real sort of skeptical mindset and they actually will, you know, sort of publicly attack mediums or try to debunk mediums. So there's that whole that group. You also have just the, the element of just dealing with the human element of just people are grieving, people are struggling, um, people are wanting specific answers to things that, um, you know, sometimes that message may not come through. Um, that person may not want to come through. So there's that. And then it's sort of like, well, how come, you know, I try to foster and cultivate um, a very loving, positive community. I try to give back in a way. Almost weekly, I'll go on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook and do an hour or two of, you know, might do card pulls, or I might do angel cards, or I might do messages through, so people love that. But yeah, of course, I mean, it's similar to, you know, you wouldn't go into a BMW dealership and say, oh my God, I can't believe how much you, you people charge here, you know? In the anthropology of human existence, you know, mediums, mystics, seers, um, they've always been misunderstood. Um, in a lot of cultures, um, like the medicine people have been sort of like exploited or kind of used for their gifts, but you know, not always supported. Um, I mean, we have it in our history. I mean, if even if you look at things like the Salem witch trials, you know, where people who were different were persecuted. It's interesting, you know, because now in, you know, mediumship is a little bit more celebrated in a way, but there is so much stuff that is still out there that people don't, you know, they don't understand or they think they understand and they really don't. Um, so I try to educate people. That is part of what I do. Okay. <laughs> so he's really downplaying a lot by a lot the critique he gets, not only by the skeptic community who has this kind of, you know, if if you think that you are communicating with the dead, if you if you're taking money and and giving people readings saying you're communicating with the dead uh yeah you you should be able to prove that so i mean always saying oh my gosh the stress i have to always prove myself well do it once and then be done with it but we haven't had it once proven still no missing people found still no um cases solved none of that so he does go on tiktok and Facebook and Instagram and does these lives. I've got many of them on my YouTube channel. You can find them in the playlist for Thomas John if you'd like to see them. Um, most of the time he's just hot reading. What I mean by that is if a woman, and we know that it's almost always women, post on his Facebook page or his wherever, and they say, I'd like a reading or whatever, he can just click on their name, go and look at their Facebook pages right there in front of him, and then just repeat some of the things he's found off of their Facebook page. Or the other thing he does is he will throw out something. He'll say, oh, I'm getting a, a Charles and there's something about a dog. Who does that apply to? And then people, women, will come in and say, I have a Charles. He was my uncle and I have a dog and and so on. And then he'll he'll go to that person. He'll just play off of whatever he just told him. So it's kind of an opposite. It's cold reading mixed with a hot reading how he does this. And I don't know how that's helpful to these people because if you look at the comments and these people in the in the chat on his lives, these are desperate people who are in dear help of needing some grief counseling. They're um, almost begging him at times for contact with somebody that they love. It's, it's, it's not psychological. These people are not in a psychologically healthy moment. Let's just say it that way. They're uh, grieving. Their critical thinking skills are at a low. And um, they're susceptible to being preyed upon. 
And I have a problem with that. So I don't know why um, this, you know, reporters or journalists or whatever this map person is calling himself. I don't know where they get off with this. This is not helpful. And Thomas John's just playing that off. Let's see some more. No, he's going to give him a reading. That's right. Oh, you guys, he's going to give him a reading. Check this out. Okay, okay. Do you think that you would want a reading that is more focused on psychic, past, present, future? Or do you think you would want a reading that's more connecting to people that you've lost? Or both? Both, but I am really interested in my future okay. and what that looks like. So I'm going to start the reading. Okay. Um, I do, when I meet pe with people privately like this, I use oracle cards. I don't consider myself a card reader, but they just, uh, um, something about just like the colors and the kind of the flow of energy, um, I just sort of like to have them with me. And um, yeah, so we'll get started. Um, I'm gonna start with a prayer, and then we'll start with whatever messages that I, I feel for you, and we'll just see what comes up and we'll go from there. Um, do you feel ready to start? I'm ready. Okay, cool. Being a medium or just the medium world is just full of skeptics. It's almost like this this dark side of being a medium where mm -hmm. it's clouded with people trying to prove yeah. that you don't know, that you're not a medium. Do you feel like there's a dark side to the medium world? I don't necessarily group that in with the mediumship world. You know, I mean, I I, I guess it is a world that we have to connect with because it's, it's something that we're is put around us but i mean you mean the skeptics yeah this you know and i i think there's a spectrum to that you know when we say skeptics you know i think everybody's a skeptic right i mean because it, it you know and, and if you're going to say to somebody oh i talk to dead people i do think that that's a claim that requires um uh, evidence or you know i mean proof for me yeah. it's like i've never seen a medium or uh, psychic, but I believe in them, but I also believe that there are so many people out there that aren't actually psychics and mediums that are charging people saying they're psychic and mediums that it almost clouds the industry for me because I don't know who to trust and I don't want to pay somebody and get a wrong reading and it like guide my life because I'm like li those words I can't get out of my head you know right, right, right. even when you had followed me I got all of a sudden I got a lot of like DMs from fake accounts from you being mm -hmm. like, oh, if you want a reading, right. pay this. Like, right. so people are like scamming and using your name right. to take right. advantage of the vulnerable people. Right. How does that make you feel? I mean, yeah. This is a big problem and is a big problem for Thomas John and for actually a lot of, not only mediums, but a lot of people on the internet is that there are fake accounts that are impersonating people in there. And I, I don't want to necessarily, uh, how do I say this? I don't want to be the person who says, you know, Thomas John is absolutely right and, you know, give him a, and, and be nice to him because of this. No, I'm saying that this is a problem. Thomas John has had to deal with it massively. People are making fake accounts, taking profile information off of him, you know, taking his pictures and stuff, and then they're impersonating him. And it's so clear, like within a couple seconds, you should be able to tell it's an impersonator. Though I've had a lot of people reach out and say, is this an impersonator? Is this a real uh, uh, Thomas John page? And you just glance at it and you see that they have no followers or they have like 10. It's a brand new account, has almost no posts on it. And then Thomas John isn't going to reach out to you and say, hey, for 10 bucks, I'll, uh, send me a private message or I'll private message you and, and I'll give you a reading. He's not going to do that. Um, his website constantly and his social media, I think he has even pinned at the top. Don't don't follow these. I will never do that. If you want a reading, you have to go through my website or here is my official email. And it is a problem all over the internet with people impersonating each other. So people really need to be aware and help your family and friends that you think might be in a moment of weakness where they are starting to fall for these kinds of things and explain to them and show them how to tell when an account is real or when it's not. Or maybe you should just take a break from the internet and maybe end your social media because um, it is not safe out there. There's always somebody out there who's going to prey on you, always. And it's not just mediumship. It's, you know, romance scams and multi-level marketing scams and, and um, cryptocurrency and just about everything you can imagine. There's somebody out there who's waiting to prey on you. And if you're not paying close attention and you click on the wrong link or you uh, 
receive a friend request from somebody and you believe what they're saying, that could be a moment when your account is emptied and it is not safe. So Thomas John is absolutely right on that, that uh, he has all these accounts. Uh, just like he said, the, um, you know, whenever you post on a Thomas John account or probably most mediums and you go in immediately, you have a bunch of people trying to read for you. So um, beware of that, you guys. I mean, I don't think you should get a reading from Thomas John either, but um, these scammers are really, really out there. I, I mean, dozens of them could, uh, could come after come to you and and pretend to either be Thomas John or pretend to be another reader. Let's see what else. Ethical governing body, you know, so uh, I have I have a full time social media person that sits there and blocks them. But a lot of times they go and make new accounts and things like that. And, and you have to be discerning and very, very careful. I mean, for that and for other reasons, if you want to have a reading with a medium, you know, there's certain things you could do. A lot of times I tell people, you know, see if they've written a book, if they maybe are doing a large event with a lot of people before you just go and buy a private reading, you know, see if they have. I mean, there's some testing services out there. So there's a few institutions that actually test medium so that might be something and I was talking about this in my mentorship because we did a whole class on ethics there is no ethical governing body you know so um, you know you could leave here today and say I'm a medium I just decided you don't know, put up a sign and be a medium morally and ethically it's totally wrong but there wouldn't be anything that really is legally wrong about that it's not a protected title um, Okay, so there are testing sites for psychics out there. They are not credible. They're really just seeing if, if a person, a lot of them you have to pay to be tested. And it's usually where you do a reading and then you do an, and then somebody else is read and then you do like a couple readings and they look to make sure that you don't look like you're the type that's going to be scamming anybody, I guess. I don't know how they know. They're not psychic either, but they do these these services that are out there. I mean, it doesn't prove anybody's a, a, a medium. It just proves that they have an account and they seem to have some kind of having rapport with people. Um, and they, you know, probably use the same cold reading treat tropes everybody else does. So those certifications are not really, um, if, you, if you're trying to differentiate between somebody who's created a fake account and is um, there um, impersonating you, well, it's hard to say because if you're looking for somebody who's written a book or somebody who does readings for large audiences and, and so on, well, that's not going to protect you from somebody who's just made a, a fake account using the picture and the name of somebody who does large readings and does has written a book. See what I'm saying? That's not, that's not helpful. So you really have to be aware and I want this whole video to be about how to avoid scammers in um, fake, fake Facebook and face uh, TikTok and Instagram people because, it, <laughs> but it is turning into that, isn't it? I'm just saying that that's true. Um, he has a full-time person who's out there handling his social media. Well, they're not doing a very good job because a lot of his social media is absolutely filled with spam. I mean, on a regular basis, he says, that they can't keep up with it. Well, then do you need two and three and four people because it is awful. It is awful. And yeah, they do create new pages after you delete one, but you know, it takes time and you should be able to go through and ban them pretty quickly. But uh, it, his people are being victimized and you'll see people who will complain about Thomas John and what they're complaining about is the person they tried to get a reading from thinking it was Thomas John, who the person will sometimes, you know, attack them and, um, you know, say you're going to die and, and I'm going to put a curse on you and, and say all sorts of bad words to the person. And they think it's Thomas John. It's not, it's, it's, it's somebody who's faking it, but they blame Thomas John. So his reputation's harmed. So I would think it'd be in his best interest to get those people out of there, even though he's constantly talking about it, but it's going to take him money because he's going to have to hire more than one person to handle this really interesting. So of course, psychics are not in a regulated, licensed um, business. It's not something that anybody has any kind of licensing or, or ethical standards where you have to sign off on them or anything like that. And I think that's something to pay attention to because many people that we run into in the work that I do and with my team are people that are in 
deep grief or um, uh, grief that is lasting longer than a year, um, many of these people are not moving on with their lives. Like they haven't cleaned out the room or they haven't given away the clothes or um, they are finding themselves in a, where it's intrusive thoughts where they just can't get past it. Um, and, or they are unable to work and, and it's not something that they're moving through the, the stages of grief with. And those kinds of people, a lot of them will just linger with these psychics and they will, they will go farther and farther down the rabbit hole with them. And that's unethical. Um, there are licensed services that you can use with people who are trained, people with degrees, people who understand grief and they understand how to move through those stages. And they're licensed. You have to pay the money, but you can make an appointment with them. Sometimes your insurance will cover it. Sometimes you can go through an agency like at college um, if you have um, mental health um, um, on campus that can help you go through this. Um, grief sucks. It really does. And there are um, people who claim to be able to communicate with the dead are not licensed. They have no training. They have zero training. And it's unethical. And so when you when you talk to a grief counselor, and we've talked to several of them, there's one uh, an interview with one of them up on my YouTube channel. Um, their goal is to get talk to you and then work through um, what is going on and try to give you coping me mechanisms and to help you help yourself and move through it so that after a few sessions with a gr licensed grief counselor, you are more or less on your own, unless of course there's something else that's underlining like medical issues or something like that. And they're trying to help you move through that process by, like I said, giving you coping mechanisms. And there's all kinds, depending on what your um, what, what fits for you. Um, there are people who are very religious. Um, maybe they're given something, some tasks or some things to do that are maybe more comforting in that area or, you know, whatever it is. But they're, they're creative. They're licensed. These are people you should actually be speaking to um, and not somebody who's unlicensed like he said there's no ethics in this at all and i mean i have a here huge problem with that is i'm sure you can tell that um you know you've got this guy matt who's just totally credulous about this i mean uh, i don't know how much more credulous you can get he's sitting there like oh i've never had a reading before but i really think they're great and i've been around them you know i really want to get it you know no <laughs> And this is a community that he's supposedly representing that has been victimized in the past by, um, by in ways that probably this isn't helping any, you know, to, to make it worse. And I, I, you know, look out for your community. And if you're, if you're not willing to look out for a community, dude, get out of the community. That's, that's what I say, but let, okay. I think we're getting to more with me. Let's see a protected title um so i think that does create issues i do feel somebody coming through on the left side of you which is usually your dad's side of the family so i don't know who that is just yet obviously but i do feel usually like this side is your mother's side this side would be your dad's side but it could be different too but i'm thinking it's somebody on your dad's side of the family matt do you have the name mary yes okay Wow. Is that somebody that died? Yes. Okay. No kidding. I feel that person's coming through too. Um, okay. Yeah. So that person is also feeling like more on the left side. So I think maybe that might be, is that your, on your dad's side, Mary? Yes. Okay. Is that your grandmother? Yeah. Okay. When did you first find out that you had this gift? How old were you? So when I was about oh. four or five years old. We're going to, we're not going to watch that. Sorry. I, I, those credulous questions. Why didn't he ask him what his favorite color is too? You know, no, we're not going there. So if Thomas John was a typical psychic medium, then throwing out the name Mary 
would be obviously cold reading because that's one of the most common names in the Western world of uh, names or like Marie, if it was France or, you know what I mean? It's, it's a very common name. Well, you know, Mary and Joseph and all that kind of stuff. So Mary's very, very common. I would definitely assume that it was cold reading. And I mean, did you see Matt's face? He's like, wow. Now, Matt is supposedly have done some reading on Thomas John and has read probably the New York Times article that about Thomas John getting caught in Operation um, Pizza Roll that that um, I and others put on. And and hot reading is shows it shows that he's hot reading. So I don't know how Matt, you know, the little disclaimer he puts at the very bottom of the screen on his videos. I've never spoken about Mary. I don't know how he could have possibly have gotten Mary. And he's like, wow, dude, Mary is just, <laughs> okay, you're easily impressed, dude. Oh, I worry about you getting yourself in trouble with taking, being too credulous. All right. Jack, what we would call a natural medium. So there are people that are born with abilities. In my profession, we call them natural mediums. So they're not a medium like some people come into their gifts later in life, some people through illness or an accident, some people through their own grief or trauma, some people we just say like they just kind of train into it. As long as you have a curiosity and an open heart, open mind, you I mean, anybody can learn to connect at a deeper level to their spirit guides. It's weird. So what's coming through here is also that you, you actually have a lot of healing gifts yourself. You are doing kind of like almost like a healing in the community. And I feel like you kind of, this is kind of one of your soul's purposes. I mean, I feel like there's other things too. Um, but I kind of feel like there's a, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. I also want to tell you this Mary person that I'm feeling, um, she's around your sister a lot. She's kind of guiding her and she's telling me, it's not a bad thing, but she's telling me that your sister has been like, I don't know if lost is the right word, but she's been like trying to figure things out. And I feel like this Mary person that's coming through, she's kind of trying to help her a little bit and kind of guide her. Um, so I don't know if, if, if your sister's been like just trying to figure out her path in life or what she wants to do or something like this, but this Mary person is coming in and saying that she's, she's kind of guiding her. She's kind of helping her. I feel like I'm, for some reason that I'm seeing that. There's a man coming through that I'm picking up, um, and I see him in the outdoors. Um, so he might've been somebody that liked to be in the outdoors a lot. I'm not really sure how to interpret that. Um, but I'm hearing the name Dan. Do you know if there would be anybody that died named Dan? Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's go here first. All right. So where do we want to do this? So, um, yeah, he's giving him a reading. Do you think it's likely that Thomas John knew that this guy was coming to his house, what his name was, especially since he was following him on Instagram, um, that maybe Thomas John, you know, just just putting it out there that maybe, just maybe Thomas John took a couple peeks at this guy's social media and his, his um, uh, you know, his his life, his family members to see what maybe just pops up, just out of curiosity, just 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 because. What do you think? Is that likely to have happened? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, of course, he, Thomas John wants to look really good. He's going to be doing this video uh, with this guy who has 168,000 subscribers on his channel. So that is publicity. If Thomas John's not, you know, he's not going to, um, you know, just wing it. He's, he's prepared before he gets in there. Now, Thomas looks like he's got his eyes closed. He doesn't have his eyes completely closed. He's, he's uh, no. Uh. So I want to play poker with this guy, Matt Cullen, because he is like, you could read him like a book. So that is, if I was ever going to do a video that wanted to show how much feedback people give when they're getting a reading when you're a motivated sitter, in other words, you really badly want to get the reading and you really want to, you know, have a good reading and for somebody to come through. He is, 
oh my gosh, look at him. He can't, his face, he's like this, he's nodding, he starts to smile, his eyes start to glisten. He is, oh my gosh, you can see where to go with this. So if Thomas John throws out a sister, you can tell right away you're on the right track. So if you're a cold reader, that would be the way to go. I want to read him. He is so simple to read. He is completely unable to give, to not give feedback back. And I, I've talked to people in the past where I've, they've said, oh, I gave no feedback at all. And you're like, hey, I have the camera on you. I know darn well you gave a ton of feedback. You can see them just like, you know, making their faces and their eyes and they're nodding and they're smiling or they look confused. There's no, just no. Of course he knows he's no. So like I said, if Thomas Thomas cold reading, this guy'd be an open book. But now let's think about this a minute. Is he cold reading? Okay, so we we did a little digging and we didn't spend a lot of time on this, but we, we came up with a few things. So first thing I want to show you is this is the obituary for his grandmother. This is his father's mother. So this was really simple to find. Um, she died in 2014. Looks like she was a lovely person. She survived by her children. Um, one of them, his name is Daniel and uh, so on. And her grandchildren, Adam, Jordan, Jacob, Jonas, Megan, Colin, uh, Matthew, um, and so on. So these are these are the people who are mentioned in her obituary. So that was simple to find. We we know that he has a sister because, well, she's mentioned in there. So we didn't go. I have a few more things I don't really need to show you because they're obvious. They're pictures of the woman, um, his his uh, grandmother, Mary Kay. They called her Mary Kay Catherine. Mary Catherine called Mary Kay. Um, there is photographs. That, oh, I don't think I showed you. Here's the top of that obituary in case you guys missed it. So Mary, Mary Kay, Catherine Cullen. So this was 2014. So um, like I said, we didn't go into great depth to find it. We knew that there is a, a Daniel that is associated, a Dan who's associated with uh, Matt. Well, it's not such a hard name to get, Dan. Um, and I assume, and somebody could probably do this because like I said, I didn't feel like we need to go into too much depth that Daniel is probably already died. So that was really hard. <laughs> Somebody was outdoors. Well, yeah, people are outdoors. It's, I don't know. It's, it's not, it wasn't really hard to find any of this. Um, we have a, I have a screenshot. I'm not going to show you at the moment, but Matt did post this where he lives in with a adorable little house with a, um, a, a library out in front, one of those little book libraries out in the front. It's very sweet looking and shows where he lives. Um, and then another thing he's posted on uh, Matt Cullen has posted on his, I think it's Instagram is this uh, little, little story he tells about whenever it's the moment when you ride back to where your story began, your childhood home, your parents are outside patiently waiting for your safe arrival, blah, 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 blah. And your sister is on her way over. So we already knew he had a sister, but I mean, that, that makes it even more obvious. Okay. So let's get to the real meat of this, which is um, where they start talking about me. And let's see what he has to say. Now, pay attention. Remember, Matt did not reach out to me. And every time I tried to correct and uh, um, the story and to talk to him, he's deleted my comments. They did see there's like one person who's really like out to get you I feel like mm -hmm. when I did a little bit of research on you uh -huh. and there's like this one woman I'm not gonna name her name but what? she has I'm sure you know who she is and she has all these websites and mm -hmm. she talked about how she made fake Facebooks and mm -hmm. like put information on the Facebooks mm -hmm. and then when she did a reading with you you had mentioned that information from those Facebooks mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that or not? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about her. I mean, I've definitely seen 
um, that yeah, she, well, first off, is, is my understanding is, is that she goes after all mediums. And she'll post things like investigation, yeah. um, sting operation, and I mean, I'm not trying to be derogatory about anybody's profession, but as far as my understanding, when I've looked into her, um, she has no scientific training whatsoever. Um, she has no training in metaphysics. She has no training in science or spirituality. I have sat, and then I'll get back to her, um, I have actually worked with um, uh, Dr. Gary Schwartz, who is a tenured professor at the University of Arizona. Um, and, and Dr. Schwartz has research mediums. He actually has built his whole career over it. If you Google him and learn about him, he has books about it. I mean, he's a Harvard-trained psychologist. And he's text tested me multiple times, uh, double blind, triple blind. And he does it just because then he's got a, you know, there's an HBO documentary. And he um, has sat with me and actually did, did a, you know, he, he actually wrote a, like a report about me and said that, you know, he obviously he you know he goes I, I you know I can't say about every reading he's ever done because I wasn't there but the three readings that he did for me I put him in double triple blind experiments <laughs> and his accuracy was among the best I've tested so that's the level of legitimacy that I feel and I think that's great I think that you know embracing a more science testing I mean sure that's great because we could only learn from that um, okay all right there so <laughs> I was a baby photographer for 34 years. I worked in retail. JC Penney's, not Sears Thomas John. He knows damn well all about me. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's just barely looked into me. No, he knows all about me. Yeah, I'm not a scientist, um, you know, but I don't have to be a plumber to know when uh, the drain is clogged, right? So he's, he's, he's desperate. For, okay, number one. He was asked straight up about Operation Pizza Roll, where he was caught in the New York Times, the New York Times, hot reading fake Facebook profiles. And he just shoves that off. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about it. And then he goes on to talk about something completely different, putting me down, which that's fine because <clears throat> I have nothing to be ashamed of. Um, my life is public. You can read my own Wikipedia page. <laughs> it's all there. Um, my even my Facebook profile is completely open. I don't keep it locked. Um, so, uh, yeah, he didn't answer that question for some reason. And Operation Onion Ring, where he's reading children as young as six years old, and we caught him again reading fake emails. Well, they weren't fake emails; they were real emails. But he read them, and on and on. If you look through the channel, you will see that he's just reading people's. Um, information that he finds on Google, uh, social media, and obituaries, legacy.com, and he also uses intellis.com. And we know this because if you want to see a video, there's a video on my channel that shows him his desktop. You see his desktop. Like if I was to show you my desktop right now, and you would see my, uh, what we have on there is a video of his his um inbox his uh the things he's pinned on the page like a uh, different obituaries that he had looked them up and he put and he had bookmarked them for different women for why why would you do that <laughs> um and he also has bookmarked on his on his desktop and tell us.com, which is a lookup site. You use subscription service that you look up people. I mean, he's not addressing any of that or on and on and on. We have shown, proved, take me to court, take me to court. I, that'd be amazing. Let's, let's, let's take this out, Thomas John. You know, all these things he's doing. He didn't address any of that. He just skipped over that to go to, oh, let's take out Susan Gerbeck. You notice we're not mentioning her name. That woman, I, I guess, should we talk about her? Should I mention her? No, that's all right. I know all about her. Yeah, he does know all about me. And this Gary Schwartz that he's talking about, please look him up. Yes, he is a tenured professor of psychology at the University of Arizona. And if you want to dig in a little further, you will understand he's like uh, a joke, a huge joke. He He's the person who gave us John Edward. 
he uh gave us a lot of the other uh quote unquote <laughs> grief vampires out there and uh and there's something that happened to Gary Schwartz somewhere in there, Dr. Gary Schwartz. And he is not a respected member of the scientific science community. Maybe in the metaphysical world or something. He's the one who produced, I think it was the afterlife experiments. And those were so flawed. I think, um, and I'm going from memory here, but I believe that he had the mediums living at their house, living with him, staying with him and his, uh, his home in Arizona, which has all sorts of crossovers and um, problems. The mediums were able to communicate with each other. So if a medium got some information, then they, there was uh, the ability to be able to show that they could have easily have given that information to another medium who could have said it as if it was new. I believe they were like in the room, the medium would say, I'm getting this information. And if it didn't apply to the sitter, it applied to the, to the person who's filming um, that kind of thing. And I believe, and I'm not sure if I remember this correctly or not, but the sitters were also living in the household where um, the mediums were. And I'm not sure if I remember that correctly or not. Somebody will have to check on that for me. But if so, there's all sorts of contamination. And this double blind thing that Thomas John says he did, well, there's that's up on my YouTube channel as well as Skeptical Inquirer about this double blind experiment he did. We showed within a couple minutes how unblinded it was. It was clear that the person he was reading for was somebody that was that was easily found. We we did it. We did it within about two minutes. It was super simple. And how we did it, you can see on the channel. And if you Google her name, which was really easy once you knew her name, which we found out within two minutes, we were able to see exactly where her grief was that he repeats back to this, this poor, desperate woman who was in huge amounts of grief and has um, one of those people I was talking about who has that deep grief where they are years later, even they can't seem to get uh, past it. And um, he's just exploiting that just, Oh, well, I'm in touch with your daughter, you know? Um, so it's just sad. It's really, really sad. So let's see what else he has to say here. Um, you know, with her, I mean, I, I just don't know anything um, sort of, I mean, you know, yeah, she says this, she says she's gone here. She's, you know, filmed this, taped this. It's like, well, that's not really an experiment because it's just like her, you know, your opinions are not a scientific experiment, really. You know, even at one point, um, though, I, I don't think I would do this now, but at one point I had even said to her, well, I'll, I mean, I'll give you a reading, you know, why don't you have a reading with me? No, she didn't want to do that. That, that would have been good content. That would have mm -hmm. been fascinating. Yeah, and I, I did offer to do that and she said no. She's kind of the more vocal one, but I mean, there, you know, there's other people who say, okay, well, you know, you, 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 you know, um, well, you just guess things. Oh, you just make up things. Oh, you look up things, you know, online or figure things out or something. Yeah, I don't do. look up things about people. I mean, that's just not something that I'm even interested in doing. Luckily, 90% Okay, let's go back to this because it's so interesting. Um, you do look up things. It is not my opinion. I always show my work. Look on everything I have published. I show screenshots. I've done interviews. I have video. There's nothing in here that would be something that couldn't be taken to court. My opinions are my opinions. And I usually say, in my opinion, and they're all like, well, this is possible or that's possible. But there, there's so much fact in there that you, you, oh, I can't even believe he's just able to say this. And, and this Matt person is like, okay, well, I'm not going to, I should write to Susan Gerbic and see what it is she has to say about this. Because obviously I want to see her perspective on it. He's calling her out. Even if he doesn't mention my name, we all know who he's talking about. He has offered me a reading. And why would I get a reading from him? He's already read me. He has already read me. And he's not mentioning that. He gave a reading to myself and to Mark Edward for Operation Pizza Roll. We sat there in the audience and he called on me. And he got my brother who had died, my twin brother who had died named Andy of pancreatic cancer. 
He got his fiance named named uh, uh, Maria. He got uh, our dog named Buddy. He got Mark Edwards' dad who had died of um, a heart disease. He got music. He got all kinds of information. But what he was saying to us was on the fake Facebook pages that we had no control over. We had no idea what was on those things. It's all on my website. You want to listen to the audio? The entire audio is there. You can't, I, I'm public with this. This is all out there. So he's already given me a reading. At this point, why would he, what would be the point? He could, I, I'm a public figure. You you can Google me, the last name of Gerbic, G-E-R-B-I-C. There's not very many of those. It would be, I'm all over the internet. There's nothing he or any other medium could tell me that I wouldn't suspect has gotten from just somewhere that I forgot I had said. That's, of course, I don't want a reading from him, another reading from him. I've already had one. And he didn't read me. I have real dead people around me. So why, when he was giving me a reading, didn't, why did he read the Facebook pages that were associated with our names that were attending? Why did he read those, Mark and mine? Instead of saying, oh, um, you're here under false pretenses, your father or your mother or whoever really wants to get in touch with you and, and give me real legitimate names and people associated with me. He didn't. He completely read everything that was on my Facebook page that I had no contact with. I was told I had a brother who's twin and I was told his name is Andy. And I think that's about all I knew. Everything else he knew. I just agreed to it. And the audio, like I said, 15 minutes of audio is up on my YouTube channel. I mean, my, my website, susangerbic.org. Look under the grief vampire tab and you can listen to 15 minutes of it as well. You can go look at the articles and the articles show the screenshots, the actual screenshots from that Facebook page and Mark's Facebook page. And you can see that's where he's taken it from. So I don't need a reading from him. What, that's not evidence, Thomas John. Your, your audience might think that's evidence and it wouldn't be fascinating, Matt. It would be st stupid. I mean, come on. How, <laughs> that makes no sense. And you, sh you, who supposedly have, well, you knew that I was out there and you knew about this criticism for him. How did you, how did you get to this idea that, that I haven't already had a reading? That made the New York Times, 2019, February. Check it out. There's an archived version of it in case you don't have a subscription in the New York Times. You can go look at it yourself. Read the whole thing yourself. Matt, you're really not trying, are you? You're just... I mean, come on. Somebody's going to try to sell you, you know, a, a just a bridge in Brooklyn and you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want I want the bridge in Brooklyn. I mean, come on, don't be so credulous. You're an adult. Act like an adult. Be like an adult and stop playing these, these games. This is just silly. Told you. Here we go. Percent of the people that come across her stuff, they like I hear back from them that they feel like she's crazy. And then there's the 10 percent that it does feel like I have had people that have said, I had a reading with you and now I see this and it makes me doubt things. And um, so that's unfortunate. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things. And, and, and I think that, you know, like I said, with my readings, um, I try to do the most authentic. I would never, you know, sit and Google people, research things. I mean, I'm just not even interested in doing that. That's my take on that. And I don't know really, you know. God, it must be exhausting, you know, to have to always prove yourself. I do find that that part of things is probably the one thing that, um, is just really challenging about my profession is the the sort of proving I, I think if I could just be like on a desert island just doing my readings and not have all that excess energy of craziness I would probably like it but it's just the reality that in the 21st century that's just 
it's just not that way, you know, and, and there is a lot of defending and protecting and I believe, and I, and I still stand by this, I mean, I think she's entitled to her opinion, you know, if that's her opinion, it's a free country. We, we, we do, you know, you do get to express your opinion and if that's her opinion, I mean, I, the only thing I don't like about it is I just, it makes me feel bad when somebody sees that and then it's sort of a deterrent for them to have a healing experience or it oh. clouds their mind and you use that word too like oh brother i'm hurting his business apparently is what he's trying to say that people don't get a healing experience from him come on now if i want to read my facebook page and get it have and pretend somebody's reading it from the you know the dead i just read my facebook page i can go back and read the old obituaries that are all connected to my family members myself i don't need thomas john's help and i don't need to pay him to do that and he does he's right that you know people who look at his look at my work um probably say no i don't think that this woman i doubt they well some of them probably do say i'm crazy i I, I get comments like that on my YouTube channel and people saying, how dare you? How dare you attack this man of God? How dare you, this man who's trying to help people? Okay, well, I can't convince everybody, but it is not just my opinion. I am trying to put this out there with as much facts as possible. I'm a skeptic. I have to have citations for everything. I have to show my work. That's just my nature. So, um, you know, I do get people who will write to me and say just like he said that oh my gosh now i am no longer a believer or i see how he did that and it is a very small percentage of people who are giving him money a very small percentage of people who come to me and and say that they were helped or they understand most of them still continue believing in mediumship that's unfortunate but they are no longer believers in thomas john and I mean, I wish it was a bigger percentage of people, but that's my platform is small. I don't have that kind of um, voice. I mean, I don't have that kind of power to stop, stop, put uh, to, to take care of this low hanging fruit like this. It's I, I just don't. Peop, there's something else going on in the world where people are always going to want to believe um, you can put out all the articles you want. You can put out all the. Um, do all the stings you want you can put on youtube channels and tiktoks and constant and people are still going to give him their his money without googling him first without looking into it they're just they're going off of a feeling their friend told them people are desperate they need to talk to the dead they need this information and they see him on um tv and they think well he must be real because why else would he be on cbs why else would he be on Lifetime? And they're right. But I don't have that kind of power to to make these networks, um, you know, get a get a, a conscience and understand that they're a part of the problem, a large part of the problem. TV shows that, that put these mediums on. This is unhealthy for our society, right? We we need to have a stronger, more skeptical um well-educated society and this nonsense they put on here these infomercials they put on for these mediums as if they're legit with no criticism at all is is really not helpful for our uh, a public that we want to have to be well-versed in topics to understand not fall into rabbit holes of conspiracy theories to be able to make good wise voting decisions um, to get good um, health care and and so on it's dumbing down the society isn't helping society and matt cullen with this flippant uh, uh interview he's done this just infomercial kind of uh one-sided believing everything that thomas john says and nodding oh yeah yeah she must be crazy I, maybe I am crazy. I don't know. What is the definition of crazy? Doing the same thing over and over again? Well, yeah, here I am doing another video on him. Um, is it helping? I don't know. Um, I know that he feels um, probably under attack. I know that he's having problems with um, with some financial services that probably are not interested in doing any business with him anymore because he's no longer able to use it. And he had to use 
his employee's daughter's account to be able to do refunds because they he was unable to use theirs. Um, that's gone away since I've been investigating him. I know that he was canceled in uh, Caesar's Palace after three months because of COVID, but they never asked him back again. And uh, if he's having a lot of trouble getting butts and seats, I know that because we we tracked that when he was in Vegas in 2020 for January to about March, April, something like that. You know, we we're staying on him and I'm not the only one. There are other people who've written quite a bit about him. And, um, the, I, you know, I don't know if other people are going to take it serious and do even more. I, I just don't know. I'm not psychic. So I really don't know what, if anything will ever happen. I, I don't know if anything will ever um, uh, make him go into a different profession. No clue. No idea. It's not, it's, you know, that's just my opinion. the clouding um so i'm hoping you know maybe if people see this interview that they'll you know i would love for them to just you know come to a reading come to a 20 dollars event you know just kind of see what it's about and then make your decision because she obviously has an agenda which i don't really understand but apparently she's obsessed with me i don't know what her issue is he's addressing something to your dad so this could be something that maybe he would tell you would this guy have known your dad Yes. Okay, so he, because he's addressing your dad. So he's saying um, to tell your dad that he was very proud of him. And um, I wondered if maybe he's saying this, because I don't know if he was the type of person where maybe he didn't express that. I, I really don't know, but he's just saying, like, he wants to make sure that that's clear for some reason. I, I don't really know why that's coming through, but that's what I'm hearing. You have a very strong work ethic. Um, you actually had a path life where you were a monk. So you have kind of like a monastic sort of like, you have that sort of work ethic where you kind of can work yourself to the bone type of type of personality. Um, and so you sort of have that like, you're on your own, you're kind of like, it's kind of imprinted in your soul. Beautiful. Okay, good. That was so special. Oh good, I'm glad you got something on it. Oh my gosh, and it's just so accurate to my life. It's good. wild, that you can, <laughs> it's wild that you can see that kind of stuff. Good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will never forget this moment. Truly. Oh, <laughs> and when you were doing it, I was just like, Matt, like this is this is really really special, you know. Right. People, and I, I I couldn't help but think how many people in my audience probably would wish to be in my shoes right now, getting a reading from you. And I, I just feel so honored to be oh, here. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you came. Thank you so much for taking for the time and for sharing your gifts. It's, it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so touched. Oh my gosh. I'm so touched. Thank you for your gifts, Thomas. Thank you so much. <laughs> I give you a break. There's a point in life where you need to grow up, you know, face reality. Whew, she's my goodness. Um, <clears throat> This idea that if you get a reading, you will find out what it's all like, what it's all about. Just come to a $20 reading. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> it's not going to tell you anything. You're going to watch other people get hot read. And if you give them enough information about you or you give them the link to your Facebook page or you have a unique name, which is um, a lot of times the precursor to getting a reading with him, you know, if you're first and your maiden name and your last name is on your Zoom screen, yeah, you might just get a reading from it. Make it easier to get um, your information. So he, so some of the things he says, like about um, anybody could be a medium. Well, yeah, I, I hear that all the time. It's I, I kind of wonder if mediumship is a bit like a multi-level marketing scam in a lot of ways, because these mediums who are saying that, oh, you're a medium too, and you have healing gifts yourself. I wonder if those people realize that these people who are saying that give classes, they mentor mediums. So you can pay them for a class and the classes seem to be endless. There's multiple classes. We've attended several of them. 
he never talk he never teaches you how to hot read trust me we've we've, we've got video of that we've watched many of his oddly enough he didn't know we were there but um yeah so so in i think in all the research that i've been doing lately the last year or so i think that a lot of these people who who profess to be mediums are actually being preyed upon themselves so um uh, more and more classes they're being guilted into into getting with it and and you know having their angels look over them and you know i've heard all kinds of different uh ways that the medium will say to usually these younger women that you need to get with it and and spirit is telling me that you need to have you need to start taking this seriously when are you going to come up with a name for your your group when are you going to start you know and they're like i know i should i should and, and I, I, I just haven't been doing my tarot. I haven't been doing my readings. I haven't been doing my meditating. I know I should. I should. It's it's a guilt kind of thing. But then again, remember, these people also are willing to sell you um, instruction and mediumship on it. Um, he has healing gifts. Ooh. And um, there's a lot of flattery in there. Well, you know, this is your person that you're... Um, um, going to be giving you a platform so of course you're going to flatter him was it was it just me or was it both of us you know all of you guys out there watching this too uh, a little uncomfortable with the ending where he's like oh my gosh that was amazing you were just so and thomas john's like yeah thank you and he's like oh no i will remember this for the rest of my life and thomas john's like thank you oh it was incredible this is such an amazing reading and oh it was really touching yeah thank you <laughs> he was getting more and more awkward there at the end when he was like thank you already thank you already can we <laughs> i i felt i felt that a little, a little awkward but you know well, that might be just me um what else was in there mediumship classes i mentioned the flattery oh he's a monk in his past life because he's a hard worker i mean and he's like oh thank you oh wow <laughs> i mean he could have told you, you were you were um a nurse in a past uh, life or because you're such a healer or maybe you were an architect and you built buildings and you designed roads and you're a civil engineer and you were a Roman guard and you um, uh, were a person who helped design airplanes and you were, I mean, he can say anything and you're just like, wow, that's amazing. Are you really, are you, Matt, come on, be honest with me. Did you really get caught up in the emotion of that and that was okay so we showed the video of it it's been maybe a week or two since you've done this interview with thomas don and you're caught up in the emotion of it and you were just like oh yeah okay great um and now you are thinking about it going well he just read my he figured out who my grandmother was that wasn't hard um you know the obituary is public and he didn't really tell me much of anything except that i was a healer and that i was a monk and that kind of could be just made up, right? <laughs> right, Matt? You really you really haven't fallen for it. Well, I guess he has because he's removed my name. He won't say my name. He doesn't put a link to anything that we've done. Nothing that we've talked about is in the video. And he's deleted my comments three times. Well, maybe, the, maybe he hasn't deleted them. Maybe they're hidden on there somewhere. You know, uh, YouTube, you can, you can hide a comment. But I've used two different accounts three posts and i've screenshot them and they're not there anywhere within no they're not there maybe he hasn't approved those comments maybe he has to ask thomas john uh, maybe thomas john commissioned him for a video maybe he thinks his followers and if you look at the comments on on the video and i'll, I'll just glance at them almost every single one of these comments is pro a mediumship they say they're mediums themselves or that was so healing or how wonderful um that was awesome con content and blah 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 there are a few negative comments on here that kind of squeak squeaked by one says kudos to the psychic to conning his way to millionaire status somebody wrote that um i guess he puts these videos up every sunday so this is saturday so i guess there'll be one tomorrow um There's just a few in here, here and there that are, that are, 
that are saying they wish they were the ones um, able to do the get the reading and that was so fascinating and oh here's one they mentioned oh this is jesus spectre oh my gosh i haven't seen this guy on youtube for years they mentioned that woman from the center for inquiry um yeah she's made defamatory comments about thomas and social media she's even overtaken the wikipedia page for many famous psychic mediums the Center for Inquiry has a team of Wikipedia editors whose job it is to defame psychic mediums by muckrating and posting negative information. Really? I didn't know that. Maybe I should join this, this group that he's talking about. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. It's a long comment. You have to hit the see more. Um, oh, What's really terrible is that this woman from the Center for Inquiry, again, why is he not mentioning my name? What is it? What is the secret? Um, uh, that she, she posted fake information to a Facebook page in an effort to coax Thomas John into relating that information in a public event. And he did. Okay. Why would Thomas John repeat information she posted to a Facebook page that she had tagged Thomas, Jane, Thomas John's name? The truth is, the information she posted was not false. It was real. I don't have a twin brother named Andrew who's died of pancreatic cancer. I don't have a twin brother. I don't have a, I don't have a brother who's died. Nobody in my family has ever had pancreatic cancer, so I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, her plan all along was to tell everyone that the information is false when in fact it was really real so that when Thomas John relayed the information in the psychic medium reading she could then turn around and claim that he correctly relayed the information uh, she went in to ensnare him deep down in her heart the only way she could get him to relay the information she posted was for the information to be real further this woman from the Center for Inquiries Minute has received many secret readings from Thomas John and other psychic mediums sat up and received many psychic readings, secret readings. The information in those readings has been so accurate that she cannot publicly announce the results or else admit that the psychic mediumship is real. That's right. She's received readings from the major psychic mediums and recorded them. The readings are so accurate she has to bury the results. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh uh, Jesus Spectre, 9883. You are, I'm so glad you're back. I have been wondering where you've been the last few years. Wow, you are, you are something else. How would you even know that I, if I've had readings from somebody and then I've, I've squelched the results that they were so accurate. How would you know that? <laughs> If I receive private readings from a psychic and I have not released the information, how would you know? Wow. Okay, dude. If you can't leave a comment on on uh, YouTube and and reveal your real name, and you're hiding behind a pseudonym, and uh, your credibility is gone. Sorry, dude. I I publish. My name is Susan Gerbeck. I am all over the place. You can't, uh, <laughs> I'm not hiding behind anything. So I guess I'll try to leave a comment under that one. And let's see if it's deleted because that would be really hilarious. Oh my gosh, you guys. I finally got this video done. I know that was long. Sorry, there was a lot to cover. If you like this video, please like and share. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, leave comments. I'm, I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff. I will leave a link to this video in its entirety in the description of this video. So if you'd like to um, uh, watch it completely from beginning to end to see if I bluffed out anything uh, or, you know, hit all the real, uh, the real readings I've had. All right. Take care, everybody.